know our service is running a little bit long today, but uh, we're getting to what we came here for, and that's to learn about the Word of God. Can I get an amen? Amen on that one. All right, so um, let's turn to, it's a minor prophet, and it's Habakkuk. Um, I would say that I didn't know how I ended up in that book, but actually... Uh, Jerry was studying something else and come across and showed it to me. And, uh, of course, my passion is in the prophecy. And, I mean, I'd, I'd love, you know, just to come to you and teach about Jesus and, and uh, baptism and salvation and all those things. But we are living in a time today that if you don't understand what's taking place as prophecy in this Bible, you'd be in trouble. And uh, so it's very, very important for us to be prepared and taught as to what is going on in the world today. So this is the reason I've come to this. This book was actually written at the same time as Jeremiah. Um, but nevertheless, he is a prophet of the Lord. And in the things, you know, a lot of people read this Bible and they think some of the stuff that happens in it, man, it just blow your mind and they think it's fiction. It's not fiction. If it's in this Bible, it's happened or it's going to happen. Amen. Um, so we're to take the Word very, very seriously. And the other thing is, and I quote each and every time uh, that I study in the Old Testament, because you've got people out there today that say the Old Testament's not important anymore. You better go the other direction. You've got to know both. You've got to know from the beginning to the end to understand all of God's plan. The Old Testament is very important. And to make it very more interesting to you is if when you read it, think to yourself, now how does this relate to today? Because that's why it's written. 1 Corinthians 10 11 says, Now these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world have come. You got something going on in your life today? You're going through a trial or tribulation? I promise you it's in this Bible. It'll tell you how they went through it, and it'll also tell you how to come out of it. And you know how to come out of it each and every time? God. Amen. Amen. Turning to the Lord. How many times do the Israelites turn their back on God and start worshiping false idols? I mean, all through the Old Testament, talked about into the New Testament. The key to life today is to turn to the Lord. Uh, plain and simple, nothing that you're going through today can you not find in this Bible and apply it to your life somehow. So while we're doing this, you think about what is being said, and I promise you, you're going to see that it's going on today. That's right. Uh, so we're going to pick it up with Habakkuk. Like I said, it was written the same time uh, that Jeremiah was written. <clears throat> and to kind of give you an overview of what's taking place here, as usual, the tribe of Judah, which would be Benjamin and Judah, um, they've fallen into idolatry and perversion and wickedness once again. And uh, so this is what this is talking about and what's going to happen. And I say to you today, do we not have wickedness going on and perversion going on today in our country? Yes. And that's what this is an example of. Um, all right, so we'll just get right into it. Now, I will tell you something else that's going to be talking about the Chaldeans, but the Chaldeans are the Babylonians. The ba what does Babylon mean? It means confusion. All right? Satan is a type for the king of Babylon, or the king of Babylon is a type for Satan in the Old Testament, uh, especially into Daniel. Uh, Revelation 17, 5, if you want to look at that, it talks about Babylon, the whore. Alright, so verse 1. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Now what is the burden that he's seeing? He is a prophet of God and he sees his brothers and sisters falling into idolatry. Why is that a burden? Was it not a burden to you today that if you know somebody that is lost, somebody that has lost their way, that they're addicted to drugs, that they're falling away from God, or they don't know who God is today, what a burden it is for you to sit there and watch that person that you love going through the things that they go through and they do not have a relationship with God. Amen. See, because God's election loves God and they love people because they love God. So we are to have compassion on our brothers and sisters. It's not just about your family members. We're all family we are all family in the body of Christ today. Yes. 
And uh, I, I know for a fact that I've got family members out there that are lost today, and man, it hurts. You know, it hurts. And all you can do is pray to God. Well, this is what Habakkuk's doing. He is praying to God for the children of Judah. All right, verse 2. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And, and thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee violence, and thou wilt not save. He's trying to intercess for the children of God here by praying to God, how long? Are we praying today? How long is it going to be, Lord, before you come and straighten this mess out that man has got us into? Look at what's happening today. Christians are being killed for being Christians. Babies are being murdered in their last two weeks of the trimester of a woman having a baby. Murder. Look at the violence and murder and adultery and thieves and, and everything that is a corruptible and a, an abomination in the sight of God today. God's children have fallen away. God is being kicked out of our country each and every day. Prayer out of the schools. Ten Commandments out of the courthouses. Everything. He's being kicked out. Try to take Christ out of Christmas for Christ's sake. Try to take God out of our national anthem. You know what kills me about it is? They say our kids can't pray in school. Well, they can't stop them because you can pray because God can read your mind, first of all. Yeah, amen. amen. Let's say our children cannot pray in school today and look at all the killings and shootings in school since they kicked God out of it. Amen. But yet, they are taking our children and teaching them the Islamic religion. <laughs> That's okay. But we don't want to offend them by saying we love the Lord, do we? We have got to stand up and take this country back, and we can do that through God Almighty. First Peter, First Peter three twelve says that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. That's right. That's right. Now Habakkuk is crying out to the Lord, "Oh Lord, how long are you going to let this happen?" And he says, "You not hearing my prayers? God hears all prayers." But the problem is, it's to the point of no return. The prophecy is being fulfilled and it's going to continue to get worse. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to be out there sharing the Gospel of God. We're supposed to be out there planting seeds. We're supposed to be reaching out to the people who are lost. Church is not for the righteous, it is for the sinners that Jesus Christ called to repentance. When in the world did church become a membership only club? I mean, we've got visitors here today, and I've had people ask me before, they say, what, do I need to get my letter transferred? How do I become a member of your church? I said, sir, your letter is in heaven. Amen. Amen. This is not a membership only club. It's not just for the rich. It's not just for those who have nice homes and nice cars. It's not for those who give the appearance that their lives are perfect. It is for the sinners. Amen. John 10.10 10, comes to mind when I read that verse again. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that they will have it more abundantly. Satan is that thief. And he is trying to steal your souls by living in the ways of the world. God sees the death of perversion going on in this world today. Murdering babies. Rape. I sure would hate to live in New York right now. I would, you, could, you couldn't get me to go there. I promise you God will have His revenge on the lives taken there. Rape, murder, thieves, homosexuality, same-sex marriages. And I know people get up tight and offended and even my wife does when I talk about those things right there, but if it's in God's Word and it's against God, then by God, I'm going to teach it. Amen. 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 <laughs> Verse 3. Why dost thou show me iniquity? This word iniquity means wickedness. Why dost thou show me wickedness and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there that raise up strife and contention. And there is strife and contention all over the world today. 
You know, we've got to live here, but we don't have to root around out there in the ways of the world and everything that Satan has to offer. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 says uh, that God has called us to be soldiers. Okay? To be a good witness to others. But we do not have to entangle ourselves with the world when we do it. You go out there and you plant a seed and you invite somebody to church and you plant a seed try to talk to them about God and they don't want nothing to do with it and curse you. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Amen. Don't cast your pearls before swine. What pearls? The pearls of truth of God's Word. They don't want to hear it. Shake the dust off your sandals and keep on walking. God's got a real special plan for them. And it's not a good one. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I know I quote a lot of scriptures to you when I read that. And that is where it says, I have taught heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you life and death. Blessings or cursings. God says, therefore choose life that both thou and thou see may live. We set our own course. Nobody's going to stand in judgment for you but you. Verse 4. There, therefore the law is slack and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. You know that God's law was written in stone. <coughs> Amen. It wasn't just written on a piece of paper. God's law was written in stone. And I tell you again, if somebody tells you that we don't have the laws today, walk away. By God we do. You telling me it's okay to rape, steal, kill, burn? I don't think so. The law is not slack. It is man that is bad. Now you look in the you look in the courtrooms today. You know that judges used to have to know the laws of God in order to be a justice. It's not like that anymore. It's not it's not about who's right or who's wrong in fair judgment. It's not about that. It's about precedence. Well, uh, Your Honor, so and so in 1950, this judge passed this right in here in favor of this person. Not about what's right or wrong. It's about precedence. They're not obeying the laws of God anymore. They are turning their backs on Him. The other thing about that is, if you've got enough money, you can get out of anything today. Amen. I don't care what you do, that leaves room for the worm to wiggle, don't it? You've got enough money, you can buy your way out of anything whether you are right or wrong. Our country is being turned upside down. Isaiah 29, 16 says, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Verse 5. Behold, ye among the heathen, I regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, this is God speaking, which you will not believe, though it be. You know what that marvelous work that he's going to do? And I know some of this might be over some of y'all's head, but most of you should know it. When he kicks Satan out of heaven onto this earth, and we get to witness that supernatural being claiming to be Jesus Christ. That is the marvelous work that he is talking about here. And so many of God's children will be deceived simply because they are too lazy to get off their tail ends and read and study God's Word. Amen. Amen. That's even people that sit in pews all their lives. And I know this sounds ugly, but they're pew potatoes. They never open their Bible and they're misled by the pastor. Where do you think Satan's working today? He's working behind more pulpits the true prophets of God today that don't know what they're talking about, they don't study the Word of God, and they do not teach the children of God. It's prophesied in this Bible. All the false prophets in this world. Do you know how to keep from being misled? There you go. Open your Bibles and read it. Because once you have it, it's a door that's been opened and a door that will never be shut again. And that says that in the book of Revelations. They can't take it from you once you've got it. And you will not be deceived if you love the Lord enough to be in His Word. <clears throat> Verse 6, For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. 
This is God now. He is the I. The Chaldeans are the Babylonians. Why would God do this? That bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land to, per, to uh, possess the dwelling that are theirs. It's, it's not theirs. It is God. It is not theirs. Why would God do this? See, people, some people don't understand that part of loving someone and loving your children is correction. He will raise up the king of Babylon. He is the one that allows Satan to come to this earth claiming to be Jesus Christ. Why would he do that? To test his children. That's right. You don't get to skip the test and go into, the, into heaven. You've got to take the test. Did Jesus Christ not take the test? Yes. Did God not let Satan test him on the mount in the flesh? Yes, He did. But there are people out there that believe they're not going to have to be here. They're not going to have to go through the great tribulation. And I say to them, oh, are you special? Are you so special in this flesh body today that you think that you're not going to be tested? But God let His Son walk up the hill to Calvary and die? And you don't think we've got to go through some little trial and tribulation? All you have to do is know who Satan is. And it's simple. He's going to stand in Jerusalem and, and, and claim to be Jesus Christ. Now some of you have not been studying with us, but one way for sure when you see Him standing there, oh yeah, He's not red, He don't have horns, He don't have a pitchfork, He's not wearing a red long-handled underwear. It is the most beautiful, charismatic angel, archangel that God ever created. You see Him standing in Jerusalem in the temple of God claiming to be Jesus Christ and you are still in your flesh body. You know it's not Him. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 says, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Therefore, where is heaven? It's wherever Jesus is. It's wherever God is. Amen. So you will not be in your flesh body when Jesus Christ returns to this earth. Does not the Bible say in Jesus in the New Testament, if they say He is in the desert, go not? Why? Because the true Christ will gather His children back to Him. You don't have to leave what you're doing because you're supposed to continue to do God's work. Not go whoring after the Antichrist, thinking that He is Jesus Christ. Verse 7, They are terrible and dreadful, their judgment and their dignity shall precede themselves. They don't have any dignity today. Do you see what they're putting on TV? Do you see what they're putting on your phones and on the internet? A push of the button? These children have such great temptation that they have to, have to endure today that we didn't have to do. They have no dignity. Homosexuals march in the streets under a rainbow banner. What do you think God thinks about that? He doesn't like it. It's an abomination in the sight of God. Now I will say this, are they still His children? Yes, they do. Yes, they are. Of course they are. Am I saying that they're going to hell? No, I'm not saying that because I'm not God. I don't, I'm not the judge. They will have every opportunity to still come to salvation. And if it offends people because I talk about it, well, it's just too bad. Because if it's in the Word, I'm going to teach it. If the Word offends you, then you need to get right with God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Verse 8. Their horses also were swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from afar and they shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. 1 Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. They are going to start at one end of this world and they are going to make a clean sweep, trying to take as many of God's children as they can with them. Everybody's got this vision that it's going to be some monster coming out of the sea. This is a religious, spiritual event. It will be a revival like you've never seen in your life. They're going to start at one end of this country and they're going to go to the other and people are going to be loading up in buses. All these churches are going to be loading up. They're going to go down to Jerusalem worshiping who they think is Jesus Christ. But they're not. 
Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 says that the ones that will follow him are as numerous as the sands of the sea. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine? And you wonder what Habakkuk's burden was? Watching that take place when there's not... I mean, the only thing we can do about it is, is try to help people plant those seeds. That's all we can do. And then it's up to them and it's up to God whether they want to take that. Verse 8. I just did verse 8. Verse 9. They shall come all for violence. Their face shall sup up as the east wind and they shall gather the captivity of the sand. Again, Revelations chapter 17 if you've never read it. Revelations chapter 20 talks about how the, the people are as numerous as the sands of the sea. <clears throat> See, the problem is today with churches is all they teach is you have to believe. You know how many people I've talked to? I've talked to a lady, a dish representative. I've talked to a dish representative. I don't know where she was at. Probably North Carolina or something like that. We got talking about God because y'all know how shy I am about talking to people. And she's, and I said, man, I said, you go to church? Right? Well, no. She says, I just don't, I don't, I've never been a church goer and I don't, you know. She says, I think, you know, I think I'm a good enough person. But see, that's the problem. The Word of God is not being taught in the church houses today. They are not teaching them of what is coming. All they talk about is salvation and baptism. And y'all know that I've been quoting this scripture for months now. Is Matthew 7, 21-23 when Christ says, Many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord! He said, They will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Who's he talking about? Well, the people in church. 1 Peter 4, 17, Now the day has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. That's where it's going to start. But what are they going to do when Jesus comes back? Are they going to stand well? They're going to start pointing fingers. That minister over there misled me. He didn't teach me. This person over here said that, that, that we were going to fly out of here and we wouldn't be here for it. And Christ is going to look at you and say, I know ye not. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Amen. That's Matthew chapter 25, parable of the ten virgins, if you'd like to read it for yourself. We have to be prepared and we have to help all those that we can. Alright, verse 10. And they shall scoff at the kings and the princes and shall be scorned unto them. They shall deride every stronghold for they shall heap dust and take it. What is the stronghold? My stronghold and your stronghold is God. The God of the universe. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And they're saying that these that are coming to be so religious, coming to claim to be Jesus Christ, they are going to break down those strongholds of those who think all they have to do is believe. Why does it talk about the dust? Well, they're, going to, they're just going to push the dirt right up to it and they're just going to walk right over. Right over. Right over millions and millions of God's children today simply because they're not prepared. Verse 11. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto God. If you notice, that's a lowercase g. We're not talking about our God, but their God. And they will be pointing fingers of blame as to why that they got deceived. And I say 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to be judged for those things that you have done while you were here on this earth, whether it be good or bad. Amen. Now, if you believe in Jesus Christ today, if you've accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, and you were to die today, yes, you would have the victory and walk through the gates of heaven. But you don't have that luxury if you are here when the Antichrist and Jesus Christ come back. There's a greater responsibility involved in that. You can no longer be judged on your faith because you will have seen Jesus in person. So then it's going to be based on your works. Verse 12. Art thou not everlasting? This is Habakkuk praying to God again. I mean, he's pleading with them for the children. Art thou not for everlasting, O Lord my God? 
mine holy one. We shall not die. Oh Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment. And oh mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. He's just like he let Judah go into captivity in this old Bible story. He's allowing his children to go into captivity today. They're being held in bondage over false traditions of men and false doctrines and false religion. And they're not being taught the Word of God. Verse 13. Thou art of pure eyes to behold evil and canst not look on iniquity. That's wickedness. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he. Walk all over those who do not have the gospel armor on. Ephesians 6.13 Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may stand in the evil day. It didn't say just the shin guard. It didn't just say the arm guard. It didn't just say the chest plate. We've got to have the sword too. Do you know what the sword is? It's God's Word. Yes. You've got to have the sword. You can't just wear a part of the armor and think that you're good enough just to walk into heaven because you have faith if you're not prepared for what is coming. Verse 14. I'm going to read these last third, three verses and then elaborate. 14. And makest men as fishes of the sea as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. They take up all of them with the angle. They catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they sacrifice under their net and burn incense under their drag. Because of them their portion is fat and their meat is plenteous. They shall therefore empty their net and not spare continuously to slay the nations. We are not talking about fish here. He is talking about people. Now, we are supposed to be, as Christians, we are supposed to be fishers of men. Yes, right. All right? We're supposed to be fishers of men. This is the role that we're supposed to play. We're not here to take up space. We're not here just to breathe air. We're not here to stick our head in the sand and just live life like there's no God, there's no Satan, no spirituality. We are here to be fishers of men. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, I said in the video today that you'll get somebody talking about God, just ask them about church. I got, I got the bait on my, my hook. I'm going to spit on it. They probably would like that. Then I'm going to cast it out. And boy, I might get a nibble, a nibble and I might not get anything. I might have to reel it back in and get some more back. What is the bait? Well, start planting seeds of God's Word. Um, I used Uncle Doug as an example because I never knew him before in my life and started going to church with Christie. So I went by and, and he was working in a shop. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. So I got my bait out and I said, all right, sucker, come on. <laughs> oh, hook <it> right there. <laughs> all right. I started talking to him about church. I'm telling you right now, you want somebody's life story, ask him about church. And he started telling me about how bad church is on and so forth, whatever it really is. So, all right, so he's sitting in church. And he's been there since then. But what is this talking about? Satan is also fishing for men. He is using a net. He is using different angles. And he is dragging and catching God's children in that net. With all of his temptations of the lust of flesh and drugs and alcohol, whatever your weakness is today. And don't you think just because you're a Christian? Don't you think just because you think you're really strong in God? Because I'm I'm very strong in God. I love him so much and I study this word all the time. But I'm telling you right now, if you are not careful, don't nibble on that bait. You know what I'm saying. Whatever your weakness is, and you go to entertain that idea just a little bit, that sucker's going to jerk that hook right in your mouth. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you're going to fall. David was a man after God's own heart. And he ended up committing murder and adultery. No one is above temptation. That's right. Now, if any man stands up behind the pulpit or you see him on TV and they tell you you don't sin, they're a liar. We are all walking in the flesh. We are all weak 
And the only fortification that we have to keep them from coming over the stronghold is God's Word. Yes. Amen. Yes. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen.